This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Do this. Run this program and read the code carefully with your partner. Um, hi, person on the other computer side. Your, my partner. Thanks. Let me hit run. Boom. I hit run. And it does nothing. My plan is to go over this code in detail because it's important and it's confusing. If you don't understand it, life will get harder later on. And then I'm going to definitely take a look at the modified stuff. I get to it at about nine and a half, ten minutes, and we'll go into detail. But this is complicated. Let's talk about it. Let's see. I bet it does. Ooh, okay, so on the event that I hit add, add, non, non. Non, by the way, stands for not a number. Uh, it's kind of weird lingo, but yeah, I think we have to put a number here and here. Let's do add. Ooh, ah, uh, what happens on the event that I click the add button, output label, what's output label? Let's see, I bet it's here. The output label is going to be changed to calculate plus. What the heck is that? What's calculate? Plus, calculate must be a function. So this is the function name like we've been learning. This is actually called a function call, right? And so what's happening is the computer say, sees this and says, what in the world is calculate? And it's going to start looking. Smack. And it hits this. And it goes, okay, I got to run this code. And it starts. But first it says, wait, symbol. Hmm, okay. Variable number one, get number input one. Boom. Input one's right there. Number two, get number input two. Input two, right there. So now if I have a three and a two here, right? So let's do this. Uh, here, I'll do a two, three. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus. I'm on the fastest. I'm gonna slow it and hit plus. See how it says grab that number, grab that number, variable answer. Now it's gonna run through our if. I'm actually gonna slow this down even more and I'm gonna go ahead and set up some watchers. This is just gonna show you what our variables are equal to. Let me do a reset and a run. Uh, bottom index, top index. What I really want here though is the num1. If it will let me, might not. Not available. Well, there's nothing in number one yet. So let's see if we do a one for box one and a two for box two. And now it's equal to one, right? Well, what's our number two, this variable equal to? Well, let me hit plus again. It's equal to two. And we can have different numbers, of course. Three, four. Oh, number one, number two. It grabs those variables. Answer is going to be equal to nothing here. But then it checks on our if. What is our symbol? Our symbol is going to be whatever item that gets passed. Four and five here. I'm going to hit plus. Well, when I hit plus, uh, I need to hit enter. What does our symbol become? Plus. What if I hit minus? And you can see it running. That's what the yellow is when it goes through. Oops. Let's do five and two. I'm going to hit minus. See the yellow? It's running through. It's grabbing our stuff. Answer is undefined. But symbol. Should I hit plus? Yep, I did. Minus. And there we go. Notice the symbol. Where it gets the symbol, guys, is right here. So if I click minus on the event the minus button is clicked, set the text to what? Okay, well, I'm going to set, I'm going to change this output to what? Well, first I got to run the calculate function and I'm going to use a negative sign. So it goes down here and runs this and it says calculate. Okay, symbol is minus and it's like a variable. This is called a parameter and it will use it later. Variable number one is going to be equal to, well, if I was doing five and two, variable number one is going to joop five. Variable number two is going to be joop two, right? Answer is nothing yet. Symbol. I'm asking a question. This is a Boolean. So if symbol is equal, equal to plus, I hit minus. Nope. Symbol would not be equal, equal to plus. This is false. It would not run this code inside. And it goes here. Symbol equal, equal to minus. True, right? That's what the symbol would be equal to. Where's it getting that? This. What is this? Way up here when I clicked run, it ran this and passed it a plus. So that is our symbol. It's going to make answer be equal to number minus number. Once it does that, the mod operator, it divides two numbers and returns. Uh, so what this does now is if answer has a remainder. So it's uh, if answer is even is what it's saying here. Because this takes whatever number is an answer and divides it by two. If three is an answer, three divided by two, shockingly, still has a remainder of one. So what this outputs isn't the division, it's whatever's the remainder. 
Well, 3 is an odd number. 3 divided by 2 has a remainder of 1, so this would be false, and it would set the text even odd label. The answer is a odd number right here. Or if it's 7, odd number. If it's 8, 8 divided by 2, there's no remainder there, so that's 0, even number. That's how it knows that. Then finally, we create the string. Answer, our variable way up here, this is super complicated, so hang on, is a string that we're going to be using. First, though, we are using it as a number, and I want you to see that. They're doing this on purpose. First, answer is a number. Answer is equal to number one plus number two. So if I have a three and a four, right, and I have plus, answer right here, notice, is going to be equal to a number, seven. So right there, it's equal to seven. When we get down here, we're changing answer from a number into a string. And the way we're doing that is saying grab number one, whatever that was equal to, three, put a space, put what was the symbol I passed, well, that time I clicked plus, put a space, and we're just adding together strings or words. What Or now the number, what's number two? Well, that was equal to four. Slap an equal sign, and now answer. What was the old value for answer? The old value is up here, right? It's whatever we already gave it. The number, the addition, the subtraction that's already in there. And it will output this. Woo! Then it sets the text, input one to empty, input two to empty, this area, and it returns. Return is pushing something back. To return something, it is giving back that item. So what that's saying is this whole huge complicated chunk thing runs, and then it says smack. And so wherever I clicked, I clicked minus that time. If I do seven and three, what happens when it returns is it says set output label calculate, okay? The computer now runs this function, like I said, but while it's running it, we're still waiting to change the output label. We haven't told what to change it to yet because the computer has to run all of this first. And it's gonna run through, we're here, we're here, it returns. And finally, we go back here and we set that. So when a function is done running, it returns to wherever it was at the code and finishes. So you can think calculate this, what it becomes, even though we're running a function, it becomes whatever answer is when it's returned. And in this case, answer would have been equal to seven minus three equals four. So our return is gonna be the value that ends up right here. It's somewhat difficult to wrap your head around, but that is definitely what would be going on. Let's see if they give us a bit more drop. What are the arguments passed through the parameter and calculate when it is called? The arguments are this, and this is annoying. An argument is the item that is passed. So plus, minus, and time symbol with the spaces around it, that's the argument. What the parameter is, is the word here. Symbol is the parameter. You can kind of think of it like a variable, right? So symbol is the variable name. Symbol is the parameter. The argument that is the thing that symbol is getting. So here the argument is negative. Here the argument is a multiplication sign. Here the argument is plus. The parameter when this function was created is symbol. Okay. What types of data does the parameter require in the calculate function? Where can you find that information? Does the parameter require? Well, it would require a string, because look at this, it is in quotes, right? It also shows me here, symbol string. So we can add comments, comments are just for programmers that explain what's going on. The computer skips over a comment, but if you're working on a big team of people who code, you might leave messages like, hey, don't touch this, it's mine, or even better, messages explaining what stuff does. So if you need to go back later, you'll know how to fix it. All right, what types of data, where can you find? What is returned? The return data type is a string, like we said, because at the end, answer becomes this with all these quotes. Anything that's gonna have quotes in it, guys, is gonna be a string, unless it's one character. All right, if time allows, make these changes. Add a divide button. Oh yeah, in addition to displaying if the number is even or odd, display if the number is divisible by three. Ooh, I love it. Okay, so first we need an, if time allows, a divide button. I'm gonna hit up here. So we have an else, I'm gonna hit a plusy thing, right? And notice what happened, I hit plus, and this became an else if, which is fine. Now I'm gonna check, just like I did above, 
if symbol is equal equal to, and then in quotes, I'm going to do a space, multiplication sign, space. So now I'm going to check if it is equal to that, because I'll only multiply then, because we're going to have a third option, and that's going to default to the division sign. So in all other times, we're going to divide. Let me add to variables. I just need x equals blank, not var x, because that would make a new variable. Answer is equal to, and then I need to head over here for division, zoop, and slap number one divided by number two. Okay, we're not done yet though, because I need a division button and I need a function, right? Uh, an on event that will let me use that. Headed into design mode. I'm going to be lazy and click on my multiplication button and hit duplicate. And uh, divide BTN and then text for my divide. Oh, how are they doing that? Oh, it's an icon. That's super cool. I love that. Choose icon. I don't even want to admit how much time I just spent looking for a division symbol. Apparently there isn't one. I wonder if I write divide here. How about slash? They are mean to us. Okay, so no image. What I'm just going to do is go up here then and do text. Boom, and that looks tiny. So I'm going to text color will be black. And let me blow it up to 55 maybe. 40 maybe. 35 maybe, something like that, 20, okay, and then that's fine. Okay, so something like that, no division symbol apparently, mean. I'm just going to move these guys over now, have this set up there, great. So we have that in place, and now I just need to add a on event. So UI on event, and these spaces don't really matter, but I can have one just for prettiness. And then I use divide btn. You could have written out button two, of course. And then I'm going to set the text to, I need the output label, just like above. And then I need, what do I want? I want to run the function. Uh, and I can show you where to grab that block, actually. Functions. This creates the function. This is a function call. Joop. Calculate. And then I need a division sign, boom and boom. So when they click the divide button, bam. Now what will happen? It should output a uh, and number one divided by number two. So let's see. I'm gonna hit run. I'm gonna put whoops. I'm gonna put a four and a two and divide. I'm gonna speed this up. Bam. So how many times? Yep. And what if I do? eight and two. Yep, that works. Okay, now the other part of that was to, in addition, display the number is even and odd. Display if the number is divisible by three. Okay, we can definitely add that. So with our modulus operator right now, if we use this, remember this means uh, the leftover, the remainder. So whatever my answer is, if it's a five, it divides it by two. Well, the remainder of five over two is one, right? There's one left. And one is not equal to zero. That's how it knows it's odd. Every even number would be divided, would be evenly divisible by two. So this parent, percent sign actually is a modulus operator, which just means it's the remainder if you were to divide. So how could I know if it's divisible by three? Why could you use that? So if I'll use answer is percent sign three. So if the answer modulus three is equal to zero, right? So if you decide something by three and there's zero for a remainder, you know that it's divisible by three. So I now can do set text and I might even add a another text area. So let me click here. Oh no, I'll go ahead and add it to that. How I'll do this though, is set text the answer is eh, I'll go ahead and add another area so what I'm gonna do is just move this up a hair I'll squeeze it where's the height 30 maybe and then I'm gonna duplicate it pull it down and now I'll say divide three 
uh, is this a label? Text. Sure. Divide three text. Code. And now here, I'm going to do a set text. Divide three text. And what am I going to set it to? Well, if this is true, the answer is divisible. divisible by three, else it's not. So in all other cases, it's not. I'm going to highlight this, copy. I'm going to move this black mark here and hit paste. The answer is not divisible by three. That not's important. You might want to capitalize it. Let's try it out. So let's say nine and two. Now this, yep, would be a 4.5. The answer is not divisible by three. Four, yep, that would be right. Now, what if I do, uh, what would give me 9? Let's do 18 and 2. Boom. Divisible by 3. Good to go. This one's kind of tricky. Onward.